This program contains graphic images and discussion of medical procedures. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to talk about uh, advanced uh, intraoperative imaging for uh, EVAR and complex aortic uh, procedures. I don't have any disclosures that are uh, uh, relevant to this, but I do want to acknowledge that uh, a large number of the images in these slides came from a variety of uh, colleagues, Matt Eagleton, Stefan Halon, and Gustavo Oderich, uh, so to give them all uh, credit that's due. So, you know, we saw with uh, Ben some terrific stuff and already some use of some advanced imaging techniques in their new operating room. Most of us now do have hybrid suites that we have access to, but traditionally EVAR procedures have been performed just utilizing two-dimensional fluoroscopy and digital subtraction angiography. But really, it would be much nicer, and we do have the capability to see anatomy in three dimensions to eliminate the need for a lot of DSA to reduce radiation exposures, uh, to be able to assess our repairs uh, intraoperatively uh, at the time of the procedure and correct any technical uh, problems that, that we may not see on two-dimensional imaging, and, and perhaps in the future even eliminate the need for fluoro altogether or to a large extent for many of these cases. And so some of the, the technologies that I'm going to talk about are cone beam CT, uh, image fusion techniques, uh, digital zoom techniques uh, uh, to reduce radiation exposures, and then some future uh, concepts in non-radiation-based image guidance using kind of GPS-like uh, navigation to work within the aorta. We saw from Ben already an example of cone beam CT. This is a GE discovery unit. Um, uh, Stefan Halan's room, uh, who I got this uh, slide from, but basically the concept with cone beam CT is that the, the uh, C-arm uh, gantry arcs about 270 degrees, connects uh, a lot of anatomic information that can be volumetrically reconstructed so that you get basically effectively get uh, CT scan data using this. And the utility of this, for especially for complex cases, is the ability to now create three-dimensional overlays to help guide these procedures, and that's the concept of fusion imaging. And so kind of the steps for this are that we take the preoperative CT scan and create our uh, three-dimensional model, and then within that model you can create anatomic markers, bifurcation, the level of the renal arteries, the ostea for each of the vessels. So you can see here in, in one of these cases where we actually put little markers around the origins of the visceral arteries in a complex thoracoabdominal case that we did. Once we've done that, we do a cone beam CT when the patient's on the room, uh, in the room. And then we register those images with the patient's preoperative CT angiogram and that cone beam CT that we just did with the patient on the table. And so here you can kind of see in yellow is the cone beam CT that was done in the room. It's being superimposed on the patient's original preoperative CT angiogram and then looking in different directions. We first register lining the, uh, the bony structures. And then we can also take advantage of arterial calcification to make sure that we have good image reg registration uh, uh, for the aorta as well. And then once we've done that, we kind of fuse all those things together, the anatomic markers, uh, the overlay that we created to create our 3D model that can then be overlaid on our two-dimensional fluoro screen that we're seeing in the operating room. And then based on, on any uh, angle that we're looking at, we can, we can still see that three-dimensional in, uh, information on the, uh, on the fluoro screen in front of us. So this is uh, one of our cases, again, a complex case with a thoracoabdominal case that we're doing. And so basically, once we've created this overlay, you can see these little rings, and those were the markers for uh, the celiac SMA and the two renal arteries. We usually do a quick catheterization of one or two of these vessels to make sure that our, our registration and, and alignment is appropriate. And so here you can see we have good alignment with the target left renal artery. We don't do digital subtraction uh, angiography. Uh, to start these cases and position devices and cannulate uh, vessels, we basically just catheterize, do a puff of contrast, and save the radiation by not doing the DSA runs. Let me, uh, can you go back one? So we reduce the need for the DSA runs. The other thing that we can do is we can right away uh, already know the optimal C-arm angles. Once you get this ring perpendicular, you know that you have the right alignment, so you don't have to do a bunch of angiography to get the right orientation for the vessel. All of that reduces the radiation doses and streamlines these cases. And so here you can see another example when we've already positioned our device. 
This is a, a four-vessel fenestrated device here with a catheter coming through one of the fenestrations in the right renal artery. Again, no DSA to confirm that we're there, just a little puff of contrast through our catheter. Uh, and then we'll move on and we'll basically cannulate uh, all of the fenestrations in the target branches and then be able to complete that case. You can create more sophisticated overlays. I actually don't like these because they confuse me and I just see too much information on the screen and I think they get in the way. Uh, but, but there are a variety of different uh, overlays that you can create to help guide your uh, procedures. Now there can be some issues with accuracy using the different systems and they do differ whether you're on a Siemens system or a GE or a Philips system, but they can be affected by the quality of your CTA uh, preoperatively, uh, the slice thickness patient movement, so if you're doing anything under local and the patient moves on the table, of course that's going to throw your registration off, or if you move the patient after the cone beam CT while you're prepping the patient, that can be an issue. There's respiratory motion, particularly of the renal arteries, and then you can also get vessel distortion from the stiff guide wires and devices that can uh, throw this off. So I like to tease my fellows sometimes to say that they're not really good with their uh, alignment, and each of our cases, the fellows does all the, uh, the fusion uh, uh, procedure. Uh, ahead of time, but uh, I have a Canadian fellow and he likes to keep telling me that the marks are bang on today. Um, here you can see also a stiff uh, sheath or guide wire basically straightening those iliacs. And so a lot of these overlays, particularly looking at the iliacs, the renal arteries, and if you have a really angulated neck, uh, that can be modified by the uh, uh, stiff angles. This is uh, Stefan Holan again, and this is on the GE unit. This is actually very nice because you can actually do your, your image registration right at table side, and you don't do cone beam CT in this system. You just do two perpendicular shots, one AP, one lateral, then you align the bony structures there uh, that, uh, that he showed you, and you don't even have to do the cone beam CT scan, and then you've already got your preoperative model that you had done on your CT angiogram, and then that uh, gets uh, displayed right on the fluoro in front of you to uh, guide the procedure. Um, some of these benefits with the newer uh, imaging systems are that you can move the table into the position without having your foot on the floral pedal, again, saving radiation exposure uh, in some of these complex cases. Uh, and this is just an example in one of these complex cases of using that uh, fusion model to position and to uh, uh, deploy a device here. So here you can see a fenestrated device that's being deployed. Here's the uh, overlay that he's using here where you can see all of his branch vessels and make sure that the device is in the proper uh, position and, and rotational uh, orientation uh, as it's uh, being deployed. So really a, a huge benefit. Again, there was no digital subtraction angiography, no contrast, and not very much radiation when that was being done uh, for that patient. So really uh, quite remarkable. And then the other thing with cone beam CT, and, and, and Ben already showed this, is the ability to do completion assessments right in the operating room. If you've got a problem with a branch, say a visceral branch or something, and that goes down postoperatively, those patients die. And so it's important to recognize that and correct that right away. It also obviates the need to get postoperative uh, CT scans in the hospital. So you can do your immediate uh, assessment. We do this without contrast, just looking at the stent forms to make sure that there's no compression, no dislodgements. Uh, no kinking of uh, any devices, and that can be done very nicely right in the room uh, just before you uh, uh, complete the procedure. Even just looking at axial slices, you can look for compression and look at all of your branches. And if you see something like this in a fenestrated case with a, with a compressed or crushed renal stent, you now have the opportunity to correct that uh, right away before it really is a uh, problem. So the concept here is with these advanced rooms and systems is that you can basically combine everything and you have it all at hand in the operating room. You can do this planning on the workstation in the control room. You can use all of this advanced uh, three-dimensional fusion image guidance to guide the procedure to make it safer, less radiation, less contrast, and, and, and more streamlined. And then even assess the quality of your reconstruction right there in the operating room to connect uh, any uh, issues that there may be. This is just looking at our earlier experience with uh, thoracoabdominal uh, endovascular repairs at, uh, at Cornell. We actually started really aggressively using fusion imaging here about patient number 20, and you can see that we've had a uh, progressive decrease in time. Now, that's not just from fusion. There's some learning curve issues there, as, uh, uh, I'm sure, but uh, fusion was one thing, and then uh, uh, 
uh, converting uh, uh, almost completely to percutaneous uh, techniques and then uh, using some different sheath technology also to reduce blood loss. But, but the image guidance, I think, was, uh, was, was key to a lot of this. Now, this is the concept of digital zoom. And so nowadays, we have these very large high-definition monitors on the, uh, on the uh, new uh, machines. And so rather than magging up the actual fluoro and using more radiation, you can collimate, take that non-mag image, and then just on the screen, digitally enlarge it. Uh, um, and that uh, saves additional radiation. So I don't know if you saw this here with the um, just magging up the image on the screen, not changing the, uh, the radiation dose, the magnification on the machine itself. And that can give you great resolution to still do all of these uh, detailed type procedures. This is an interesting thing, and this is, uh, I was talking about some of the potential in the future and doing uh, radiation-free image guidance. This is uh, work that Matt Eagleton's doing with Centerline Biomedical, basically using electromagnetic tracking, almost like a GPS system, to navigate catheters and devices uh, within the aorta. And so they do base this on the preoperative CT scan DICOM data. And from that, they create these three-dimensional wireframe frame, uh, models. Those can be superimposed or registered, both using angiography or with CT scans to basically create that same kind of three-dimensional fusion image for guidance. And then within the model, they use this electromagnetic tracking to track these catheters and devices and wires that have little sensors on them. And so it's a little bit bulky right now, the uh, system. Uh, they do have proof of concept uh, outside of patients and actually now some patient data. And here's the concept here. So this is basically this EM guidance generated uh, image where you can see your three-dimensional aortic model. You can see the catheter within space within that model and navigate it, not just looking at the fluoro screen, but actually looking at the monitor for this guidance system. You can uh, rotate. You can look down the barrel. You can magnify all of these things to really uh, uh, help catheterize and cannulate these uh, target vessels. And they have uh, now used this in a, in a couple of cases here in their ID experience at the Cleveland Clinic, just showing this uh, EM tracking navigation to access uh, target vessels here in a uh, branch thoracoabdominal case. And then with the, the modeling that they're doing, they're trying to also see if they can assess and, uh, and see the alterations on the vessel with respiratory motion and other motions to see if they can model that, <clears throat> to see if you can correct for the stiffness of the wires and the device and how that affects vessel morphology so that you can orient and also the effect of uh, here wires in a renal artery. So based on the type of wire being used, whether it's low stiffness, medium stiffness, or a very stiff wire that uh, induces a lot of straightening and conformational changes to help guide these systems. So I think with that, um, I'll conclude here saying that the fusion imaging certainly does provide continuous three-dimensional image visualization. It facilitates EVAR, especially complex cases. There is some learning curve to doing it, but it really can be learned and easily integrated into the workflow. We do it routinely now. Our fellows do it in virtually every case. It really does facilitate uh, device positioning, deployment, target vessel cannulation in these complex cases and significantly can reduce radiation doses and streamline the procedures. I think completion cone beam CT is also an important thing. You can detect these uh, technical problems and correct them intraoperatively. And certainly the future is going to be really eliminating radiation uh, altogether and being able to correct for some of the vessel deformations and movements uh, uh, during the cases. And with that, I'll stop.